What's up, sons? It's Blind John with Silent with Tech once again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the PC performance of Mass Effect Andromeda and what you can do to get some better and smoother gameplay. So let's dive right in. Acceleration increasing. Unfortunately, all the benchmarks are going to have to wait until later or another video, probably on Monday or Tuesday sometime, as my EA account locked me out of playing any more of Mass Effect Andromeda. This is not because I hit the time limit, because I actually do own the game or have purchased it, but there seems to be some sort of bug where I'm just blocked from booting the game after I started up on too many systems, it says, which is odd because it was the same system, my test bench just with a different graphics card every time so I'm not sure if that's a bug because I feel like it should just be reading the system as that install of Windows and that motherboard but I'm not sure what's going on there I tried to chat with support and pretty much got nowhere and then they told me that I needed to call them and this was about 2 a.m. on a Sunday where they do not have any availability to call and no availability to call pretty much for the rest of the weekend so we're just going to be going over settings to get things started off the test bench is going to be an i7 7700K, made it to the MSI Gaming M3Z270 motherboard, and it has 16 gigabytes of Kingston DDR4 clocked at 2400 megahertz, and the system is running on an NVMe drive. It's the M.200 from Biostar, and it's over SATA. The graphics card that I performed all of the benchmarking with is going to be the GTX 1066 gigabyte and the MSI RX 480 8 gigabyte both of the graphics cards were installed and then we went ahead and tested each setting at its highest and at its lowest and then recorded those and calculated the percent and change and averaged the numbers with the AMD card and the Nvidia card so we have a pretty good idea of how much performance you're going to get per setting the benchmark run itself is actually just going to be right after the planet fall and you'll have a little bit of a conversation and then you're going to walk forward and stand and look straight this is important do not look at the skyline or start the benchmark while looking at the skyline because the fps goes through the roof and it's going to make your benchmark inaccurate the other thing to note about that is that it does kind of tell you that there isn't a ton of detail in what i would call the backdrop at least in the early missions. There is, however, a lot of detail throughout the rest of this benchmark because we have a lot of storms going on. So things like effects quality, shadow quality, and all of that should be easily tested. From there, you're just gonna run, sprint, until you get through everything up to the point to where you have to shoot a barrel. You'll shoot the barrel and then stay zoomed in with your pistol out to finish the benchmark. You'll jump up a couple ledges and it should end there being about 60 seconds long. Of course I used Fraps for this because it is a DirectX 11 game so I didn't have to use any present mod so I was pretty happy that I didn't have to dive too deep into a lot of calculations this run. With all of the calculation details out of the way let's talk about the numbers we ended up with. Starting at the very top and moving towards the bottom you will see the most amount of gains in FPS to the least amount of gains at the bottom. The best setting to go ahead and turn off if you're having FPS issues is going to be ambient occlusion where you get an 18% change. For example on both the RX 480 and the GTX 1060 you can run all the rest of the settings at ultra and just turn off ambient occlusion and you'll get 60 FPS on your average frame rate no problems. Pretty cool stuff. Coming in second is going to be lighting quality with a 16.9% change. And it's pretty much one of the same things where if you turn this all the way off and leave the rest at ultra with the RX 480 or the GTX 1060, you should be in the 60 FPS range. This of course is at 1080p. In third place, we have shadow quality with a possible 13.32% change in FPS. And then from there we start getting getting into the area of not affecting your FPS that much, depending on how low you are. We get a 10% or an 8.52% change with texture filtering, an 8% change with terrain quality, a 6.4% change with post-processing, a 5.92% 
6% change for texture quality, 5.89% change for effects quality, a 5.43% change for anti-aliasing, a 5.38% change for mesh quality, a 2.37% change for shader quality, a 2.1% change for film grain, a 1.15% change for chromatic aberration, and a 0.7% change in vegetation quality. A funny note here is that you can turn off chromatic aberration on the side of the Xbox One as well, and the reason I know this is to get the B-roll for the benchmark run, I had to load up my EA early access on my Xbox One and capture that so you guys could see it. The other setting you can change on the Xbox One as well is the film grain, which I found interesting too. So those are a couple settings that you can change on the Xbox One itself, but as you see, neither one of those provide a huge bump in frame rate, so it's probably not even worth it on the Xbox One. I'm sorry I didn't have the settings screen capped for you guys to see. Like I mentioned, I am locked out of booting Mass Effect Andromeda, and I will get that when we go over the benchmarks for all the graphics cards later in the week. So definitely hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the little bell that notifies you when I post a video, just so you guys can come back and see all the benchmarks. We'll be taking a look at the RX 480, the GTX 1060, the RX 470, RX 460, and the GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti, and how they perform in the game. A little hint is I'm pretty overall happy with the performance of Mass Effect Andromeda. Of course, there are some animation issues and stuff that I'm sure you guys are well aware of, and I would just recommend going with the default character, otherwise the lips, the lips, the lips aren't on fire, they're just terrible. The lip sync is awful. So it seems to not be that bad with the default characters of the riders, uh, either the girl or the boy, the brother or the sister. Hope this video helped you get all of the frames you desire, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And until next time, I'll see you next Tuesday.